Hi, and uh, welcome everyone to this webinar about disability management, uh, the key to create positive change. This will be a general presentation for uh, something called call reluctance, and when it hits sales people, we call it sales call reluctance. Uh, to be visible, to go up on the stage, call people you maybe don't know in order to self-promote, whether you're a salesperson or a partner in a like an accountant company, you need to create customers. And that is called prospecting in the sales world. For some of us, that is a constant, constant emotional struggle. And in psychology, we call it ICS, inhibited social contact initiation syndrome. A hesitant or conflicted about to initiate contact with people that could be important for you, your career, or to sell your products. In popular science, we normally call it the fear of self-promotion. And when it hits salespeople, we have a direct word for it, sales call reluctance. And remember, it's not only telephone. Uh, this is uh, American research, so call means every time you try to self-promote. Whether it's on the stage, or in the phone, or you're knocking the door as a salesperson, or book a meeting, or you talk to someone in the bar. Every time you have a time to self-promote and you don't, then you normally struggle from call reluctance. And it's contagious. We're not born with it. Uh, we get it from people we admire and want to be the same. It's strained. It's a learned behavior. behavior. That's why you sometimes in companies doesn't really see that there are, are full of uh, core reluctance and can do much, much, much better. And that goes for us as individuals too. Uh, it's actually so strong that it takes about eight weeks before a new salesperson have the same problem as the management in a company. So sometimes it even help to recruit good people into the company because they will be in eight weeks have the same problem to sell as the management in the company. So maybe you need to start in a company to cure the management first before you start with the salespeople. That normally gives a really good result and it keeps longer. Uh, the research we base this webinar is based on George W. Dudley and Shannon Goodson's research that started in 1979 and is still researching. And it was uh, acknowledged by SIOP, the Society of Industri Industrial Psychology in the United States, as top research with really, really quality tools. And tools in this world we call psychometric testing. Uh, in the normal world today, it's not good to be good. It's not enough to be good. It's not good enough we need to perform. And one of the missing links is actually visibility management. How you do to make yourself visible. Because if you're not visible on the market, you can't be recognized. And if you're not recognized, you can't be rewarded. A salesperson is the chance to get an order. For artists, the chance to show the song, so they can be sung or sold. And it's visibility management is the habit that are closely linked to making money. It's even stronger than the competence. You need to make your skills visible to get a rise in salary or to sell more so you get a higher commission. If you look on successful salespeople, what, it's, what can we prove? There are a lot of things in sales you need to know. Create trust, to close in the right way, to create relation. But something that is true for every branch and every country we've been into, the top salespeople have more contacts than others. So they initiate more contacts with prospective buyers and that on a consistent basis than other salespeople do. So number is important. And the number, of course, needs to be directed to the people that are important for you. So when is your prospecting or networking too low as an individual or in a company? You actually, as an individual, when you don't reach your personal goals, when you have ideas what you should perform to reach your career or something, or when a company doesn't utilize the existing marketing possibilities, 
or you are below company standards uh, that have uh, they measure and you should be 12 visits or 16 visits a week if you're a field sales person of course there's different different company the numbers and different branches as well or you don't have time to establish in contact with your existing prospect base so you don't have time for that then we know your prospecting is too low and you maybe look into your prospecting behavior and one of course of the part that can stop you reach your prospecting level whatever it, it is is sales call reluctance so if we simplify the sales process we can talk about it in four different steps to sell you first need to initiate contact with a prospective buyer and then you can introduce yourself and it's in this area sales call reluctance could be deadly because if you don't initiate any contacts you, you will not have the chance to sell or use your product knowledge or service knowledge or your extremely sensitivity to find up and create trust with people so you need to first initiate contact to introduce yourself and then you're allowed to inform and influence the prospective buyer and that's called selling and that is as important as initiate contact the only thing initiating contact comes first so if you have a problem to initiate enough with contacts whether it's a networking event or booking prospect over the telephone or talk to people when you meet them in different uh, meetings sales training doesn't help because core reluctance is not caused by lack of knowledge or skills or training it's found in sales people who are emotionally unable to translate what they already know into behaviors which will move them closer to the goals that are important for them so the answer is no sales training doesn't help but there is training that actually helps salespeople. so what's behind it to actually prospect on a daily basis so you reach your goals you need to have motivation and in our world we define it a little bit different we call it physical energy and we um, always wonder do you have how much do you have the amplitude do you have enough to sell the numbers you need every day and the duration and the velocity they say how long do you have this energy the whole day or the half half of the day and when you need to refill physical energy how fast you do that is enough with a 30 45 minutes lunch and then you're on on the afternoon as well this energy needs to be directed somewhere and that is to your goals what is important for you why do you have this job why do you want to reach this number of contacts or why do you want to perform on this level and to reach that you need to have company targets as well that's the company goals what do you actually need to perform to keep your manager happy or to get your commission and you need a strategy to actually reach this number of contacts or the numbers you want to sell the way they are what people are going to talk to which are important to you uh, what products or services are you going to sell to these target groups and you need to pursue it every day and when this energy is going over to reach to your goals actually talking to people that could be important for you we start most of us coping a little that means energy is diverted from your goals to do other things and that what we call coping and in extreme you can get an emotional short circuit you faint on the stage or something like that and you have seen it uh, it's not fun for the people who faint of course I even have salespeople who have fainted in reception on the first visit cause of high anxiety and maybe they shouldn't be in sales but normally most of us is just a coping behavior and we can actually change that so more energy is going into your goals instead of coping so we learned a habit and to understand what a habit is we need to define it and it's actually a learned automatic sequence of behavior something you maybe don't even recognize in yourself instead of calling an important customer you do something else and you have done that for years and you think that's normal and you business of that 
called reluctance do we have? So far we have found 12 different types. Uh, and I will end with these types here in this webinar and later webinars we will go through each and one more deeper so you understand them. So the first one we call doomsayers. That is people who have a worst case scenario in the head all the time. The only thing they're thinking about what can go wrong with this call, with this meeting, with these new products. And so a lot of energy is directed into their stomachs. Uh, so for doomsayers, stomach problem is not that uncommon. Over preparation is people who prepare too much. They took too much time into preparing. Uh, we of course looked at underprepares as well and they don't sell good either. But that is people who doesn't take the work seriously. Over preparers want to do a good job. They need to be knowledgeable. So they prepare for that. And in the extreme, it can bleed into the sales presentation as well. And then sales trainers normally call them crocodiles, a big mouth and small ears. And as you know, we should listen more than we talk in sales. I think everyone should maybe do that. So over prepare, take too much time and lose too much time to prepare. Hyper pros have an image concern that they need to look and sound professional in order to sell. They have a tendency to master clients, which clients normally don't like. They need to float a little bit above our rest and think they are better to protect themselves. Uh, hyper pro could be the most well-dressed people in the world, but they always almost sell half what they can do. It's very common in the consultants industry, by the way. Stage fright, afraid of selling to groups. Not talk to groups, we're talking about selling, prospecting, where you have a lot of people in front of you. And stage fright is different for different people. For some, it starts with four people and end with 10. For some, it starts with 10 and end with 100. It's very different for different people. Depends on the brain, what happened when they got to stage fright. And it's one of the most common uh, reluctance type, one of them, and the easiest one to correct. Actually, quite easy. Role reaction, secret, secretly ashamed of being in sales. It's some of the stereotypes of the bad, unserious, unethical salespeople you may have read in a book or seen in a movie uh, got stuck in your brain, and you think that all salespeople are like that, and the whole world thinks that about salespeople, so you don't really like to be in sales. Uh, people with early reaction have a tendency, what we call quit while succeeding, the QWS syndrome, because they are secretly ashamed to try to find a new job quite often. Today, the next one is yielder, and today that is the most common reluctance type. That is a relationship-oriented type. Yielders are hesitant or conflicted about to be too intrusive, too offensive, or even aggressive, or even in worst case, assertive to people. They don't want to bother other people. So they find other way to handle contacts. They wait, and maybe they wait too long, so other gets the orders. And yielders are actually quite expensive because it hits in two areas. Not only initiation, in, initiate contact with prospective buyers, but it's also when they come to the closing area. And closing, as you know, is essential in selling. And they are afraid of being too aggressive when they use closing techniques, so they put the whole responsibility, responsibility on the customers. Next one, social self-consciousness is very special and directed to a special target group, to people that are more educated, more wealthy, or higher up in the hierarchy than you are. So people with social self-consciousness target people in the same level that they are. So they have a problem when it comes to selling up in companies or talk to a target group that are more educated or more wealthy than, this, than they are themselves. Could be really costly in some key account positions, for example. Separationists have a hesitant or conflict about 
using friends, not only to sell to, but actually talk to friends to get more contacts, because they have contacts as well they could recommend to you. And depends, of course, what you're selling. Emotionally unemancipated is using relatives, the people that are closest to you, your family, and try to get help from them to get contacts to sell to. And of course, even to sell to your family or relatives if you have products that suit them. Refer aversion. Yeah, that is asking existing clients to help you to find contacts to sell your products and services to. And people refer refer aversion are of course conflicted about doing that. Telephobia, just on the phone. Other things could be no problem at all to talk to people, knock the door, go to networking as you meet people in real life. But talk to them over the telephone could be very hard for people with telephobia. And the last one we call opposition reflex. A reflex not to agree on anything. That means they have hard to take training, have hard to take orders from the managers or even advice from the manager how they could perform better. Uh, they could actually be even rude to customers, uh, even if they sometimes don't even know that themselves. But there are people that starting, they want to be straight and honest, but they got so far that it's a reflex to disagree with almost everything. The best thing with oppositional reflex is not to employ them. Uh, the other thing, if you have them, they could be top salespeople if they understand they have this problem and start to correct it. That was the 12 types we have found in core reluctance. And we will in future seminars go deeper into all of them. And if you found yourself in some of these, you can actually buy the book, uh, The Psychology of Sales Core Reluctance, that has all the types, you can read more about it, and it's also half of the book is how you correct these behaviors. So it's a really good book to start with if you find yourself in one of these types. Normally salespeople today suffer for three or four of these types. Uh, so it's, you don't have all of them deadly, but some of us have more than others. Some of these types are easier to correct than others. So I wish you good luck and I hope you will come back on future seminars to get more deep into the different types and how you actually can cure them. I wish you a pleasant day and I hope you enjoyed the webinar. Bye bye, see you later.